Thank you so much for coming on our show. Our biggest question to you is, what do you feel about Tom Brady not being a part of the Patriots anymore? I mean, come on. In South Africa, I got to take grief for this. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very upset. I can't paint it any other way. It's a, a crushing, crushing blow to me. And I will continue to root for him and his success wherever he is. Um, so, you know, I'm very sad that he did. And Gronk. And Gronk. Well, yeah. I Obviously, I know. Yeah. And Gronk. Yeah, yeah no, they're, they're both gone. So, hey, what, are, what, what teams do you guys like? So, I was actually introduced to the Patriots. So, I did like a gap year in Israel. And um, my roommate was actually from Boston. So, he started introducing me all to like the Boston teams. So, like, I'm a Celtics guy. I'm a Patriots guy. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually more of an oddball. You know, uh, my mom's side of the family is from Wyoming, Utah. So my NFL team is actually the Broncos, but my real sport is baseball. And uh, I grew up in New York City, so I'm a diehard Yankees guy. <laughs> diehard Yankees guy. 27 rings. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I just, How, I were you old enough to remember the last one? You know what? Uh, to be real with you, the only one I really remember is 09. Yeah. But that's it. But you know what? It's crazy. Every decade we've made it to, you know, a, po a World Series appearance, and from tw the, the the 2010 decade, not one. Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> <laughs> a little you spoiled, see, you know. For me, like baseball, I think of baseball exactly the same as cricket. Like it's just it's so boring. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I cricket over it, there. Yeah, yeah, cricket. Yeah. I remember like my mates and stuff. They'd all want to go to like cricket games, and you'd just sit there the whole day. It is so boring. <laughs> and my dad, my dad took me when I was very young uh, to, uh, he lived in London, and so he took me to, to cricket. I actually just remember enjoying it. I was, I was probably like nine or ten, but I think for me the reason I enjoyed it was because they kept serving tea, and my dad kept letting, letting me have it with like tons of sugar. So I was just That's like cool. sitting there just like sipping tea with sugar thinking, oh, this is what a delightful way to live this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Wow, you both have the roaring fire. Is that a is that a part of the show now? Uh yeah. Well, we we're trying to increase the budget, but uh we'll get there eventually. I like it. I like <laughs> it. I like yeah, it. mix it up a little bit. Yeah, looks good. Thank you. So we just wanted to ask you, um, what is your current role on the show with Family Guy? Okay, so my current role is called uh executive producer and showrunner. So what that means, executive producer is just a, when you see that in like sitcoms or one hour dramas, that just means that's a writer. Uh, executive right. producer means something else on movies. And so you think of like a guy behind the scenes or paying money for the show somehow. But in, in television, an executive producer is just a writer who's risen to a higher level, usually by being there a long time. So I'm an executive producer and then I'm showrunner which means I'm just kind of, um, you know, the material that comes in every day, I'm the one along with a co-showrunner named Rich Appel who says yay or nay to putting it in the script. I've got it. So, he, so the guy, Richard, he basically is the one who determines, okay, this is either going in Family Guy or this is scrap this all together, correct? Yeah, we, we confer about, you know, what to – Basically, it's a two. We're we sit in the same room with a few other writers, and when we're talking about a script or an idea, one of us will say, "Yeah, put that in," or "Put that in here," or "I think we should take that out." And and so we're we're pretty much always on the same page about what to you know what to do with the show. Absolutely, it's like a two way street. Totally. Um, see, how how was your relationship with you know Fox? Because you know how does Family Guy really work with them? Because there's quite a bit of time. And, numerous episodes where you guys quite frankly make, make fun of Fox you know yeah. how, how has that relationship worked with you know those type of jokes and stuff you guys do well I think for the most part that they don't care because it's one of the few shows that kind of is consistently done well for them in some way shape or form right so I think all they really care about at this point I mean they're looking back and they're like Jesus this show's been on for like 20 years and it's still somehow making us money so nobody say anything about it just let it go whatever they say is fine so most of the time if we make jokes about Fox they're pretty 
uh, you know, they're like fine with it, which is to their credit. Right. Um, but yeah, there's still occasionally things that they'll reach out and say, you know, we'd rather you didn't do this. Like tone it down in that certain sort of respect. Yeah. And I mean, that's that kind of stuff, thankfully, because the show has been on so long. Um, and again, the, the co-showrunner I work with, Rich Appel, who's been uh, in the business longer than I have and worked at some great shows. And he has just amazing relationships with um, a lot of the executives, both on the studio and network side. So oftentimes, if they have some kind of a note of like something, hey, guys, kind of don't, we'd rather you didn't do that. It can come from somebody higher up in the corporation than standards, and it can go right to uh, Rich, and they can talk about it and figure it. So it's like everything is done very uh, civilly now, which is nice. That's great. Do you guys feel like now being under the Disney Corporation, like the, it might be a little bit more constraining? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when we were uh, at – just at Fox and we wanted to do those parodies of the Star Wars movies, George Lucas could not have been more gracious, you know, in letting us do that, assisting. He, he watched one of them with us. It was amazing. Like wow. he could not have been more like great about that whole process. And then, you know, they get sold to Disney. We get sold to Disney and we were kind of thinking for a minute, like, Hey, maybe, this will kind of unlock the ability to do more Star Wars stuff. And now, th like, the first Star Wars joke we had, not even a, uh, an episode, they were just right. like, don't do that. And so now, ironically, even though we're at the same company, it's like we can't really do Star Wars stuff. So I love Blue Harvest. I've actually got, like, the whole DVD box set. It's great. Oh, yeah. Would you, there was would one you big one. Was like a, did you yeah, get the yeah. one with the T-shirt? With the, the one with the T-shirt. It's actually in my cupboard. And I was thinking, oh, should I actually wear it for this interview? But I just didn't think of it at the time. <laughs> um, would you guys ever think about doing, like, any other parodies? Or have you thought about maybe going into that realm? Yeah, I mean, we talk about it every once in a while because... Um, the fans really like them, which right. is I, I, understandable. Of course, with Star Wars, you can't, like, that's sort of the top of the mountain, you know? It's when you start there, I don't, I'm not sure what other franchise would kind of fill those shoes. And I know we've talked about Lord of the Rings or, you know, maybe even like a, like an Indiana Jones kind of thing or something, but it, it just never quite, reaches the level of like oh my god i can totally see this lasting for three uh episodes so we, we've sort of shied away is, is there like is there like a decent like any like uh hostility or kind of like a uh, bit of rivalry between you know uh you know trey parker and those guys over at south park and the simpson guys um, I mean, Simpsons are also Fox, actually, too, I believe. But you guys yeah. ever, like, poke fun at each other? I know South Park's done that with uh, Simpsons, but has Family Guy ever received any of that, you know? Uh, like oh, yeah. Attention? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, quite a while ago when Family Guy was new, uh, the Simpsons made, uh, you know, kind of slammed them in one of their episodes. It was a funny slam. It was like they were looking up, like, plagiarist in the dictionary or something, and there was a picture of uh, Peter. Yeah, yeah. And so I think early on, um, you know, the Simpsons kind of looked at Family Guy like a, a little brother that was really annoying to them mm -hmm. um, and kind of like wore their clothes, the hand-me-downs. Yeah. And uh, so, but I will say over time, uh, Seth has worked with many of the peop uh, Simpsons people on like different projects I have a bunch of the people on staff have, and we all kind of know each other now that we've been around for an insanely long time. Of course, them even longer. Right. And so there's no bad blood between us and The Simpsons at all now. And I think any joke we make on the show about The Simpsons, we always try to give it that like an appropriate sort of tip of the cap to them, yeah. like, it's almost like a salute. Um, but w with um, South Park, they uh, famously slammed Family Guy in one of their episode episodes where they depicted the Family Guy writers as like just manatees, like moving <laughs> jokes around. And it was, it, I mean, that, that's funny. Like, I, I thought it was very funny. I think people, you know, 
at the time felt like, oh, we, we got to get him back. And I know I, I did. I was – every opportunity along the way to pitch, like, some kind of South Park slam, I was like, we got to get him. But Seth – and I think to his credit now, was always just like, no. And he felt like it was, uh, you know, the expression punching down. Yeah. So he just sort of felt like South Park and, – and that's not a slam on South Park because they have rabid fans and it's a really funny show. But it's just by virtue of being on Comedy Central, they just have a smaller – platform and a smaller audience than Fox, which is a, a larger network. Um, and I think that at first South Park looked at Family Guy kind of like the uh, <clears throat> the sort of blonde Johnny and uh, the Karate Kid, like the big <laughs> asshole with like the money and shit. Yeah, and they're yeah, like yeah. the plucky Daniel LaRusso. They're ready to kick <laughs> us in the face. Um, and, and, I, and I can't argue with that assertion because you know family guy was on you know had more money being put into it more advertising more hype and all that kind of stuff so have you guys like and you know in terms like if you look at what happened with the simpsons recently with uh apu i believe his name is the delhi guy you know the Mm -hmm. the indian delhi guy have you guys like faced any more tension from the network or you know other platforms that have pushed you to be more socially conscious in terms of you know the 21st century is really more politically correct and you know, years past when The Simpsons came filmed in the 80s. You know, has the network kind of told you to kind of tone it down or, you know? No, thank God, like no. No, they haven't, and uh, I'm glad they haven't. Um, no, I mean, in fact, if anything, that kind of stuff comes internally from our writing staff where if, you know, if we feel like we're pitching jokes on something that that somebody feels like is in some way inappropriate in this day and age or we'll sort of spell out why we couldn't do such and such a thing well you know we police ourselves in that way and i think there are a lot of things that family guy gets away with that other shows don't just because we've been around for so long we're a cartoon you know it's we sort of have a reputation of being like edgy or whatever so we do we get a get away with quite a bit on a bigger yeah. note, uh, I know that you guys obviously released like the Stewie Untold Story, but are you guys thinking about making like an actual theatrical release of like a Family Guy movie? Yeah, I think that's going to happen. Uh, you know, there's no, nothing is in the works yet. There's no set date or, uh, but I, Seth often speaks of making the movie and uh, he, uh, he said that, you know, when it when it works with his schedule so i would imagine that when he's done working on uh, the orville whenever that is possibly that could be a window of time where he might say let's do this thing yeah i mean you look at the sims you look at the simpsons movie i mean they made a fortune off that yeah oh yeah you know? yeah no and uh i mean that was that was a really funny movie so i'm sure he's looking forward to you know, to doing it and, and dreading it at the same time because I'm sure it's so, so <laughs> a lot much. of work. Yeah. And then speaking of films, obviously you made Ted. Um, how did you guys actually come up for the whole like idea of Ted? That was all Seth. Ted, the idea came fully formed from Seth. It was an idea that he had had for a little while, and I think he was kind of waiting for uh, CGI to to get to a place where it could be done. Um. But yeah, so basically that was uh, myself and, and Wellesley Wild, and um, Seth just pitched us the story, and obviously we were like, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, sure. <laughs> and yeah. then we took a long time to, like, outline it, you know, in three acts, and I just remember this giant, I think he had giant poster boards, and we had, like, all these stickers on them, and, and uh, that took a long time almost as long as the writing itself. How um, was that like whole transition from moving, like from writing for a TV show to actually writing a film? Well, it, I mean, honestly, it was very similar. It, it just took a lot longer just because of the, the thing is so much physically longer than, a, than an episode of Family Guy. So it felt like being trapped in sort of like a Family Guy Groundhog Day where we just kept like gaining sort of, you know, six inches of turf at a time um but you know we eventually got there absolutely so there's actually there was something i was thinking about um when it came to that brian episode the episode where brian died um right. the reason why you guys actually brought 
Brian back. Was that because of the fans or was it just like you guys were actually, like, did you intend to do that? Yeah, it's so funny. I mean, like, it, it, this is one of those things where I feel like a little bit of a, like an inside animation dork. But like, if, if you knew a lot about a certain field and I asked you a question, which seemed like kind of absurd to you, like this is, I, I can't contain giggling at, at that because we, these episodes take <clears throat> like 18 months to go from writing to air. So the idea that we could switch after three weeks of hearing the fans say, bring Brian back, what happened? would be like, oh my God, we better put him back. It's just, it's impossible. So we had planned that for the whole time, that it would be just, he would be gone for just the three episodes and then would be brought back. But it just seemed funny because not only were fans like up in arms about it, and then afterwards fans were like, ah, you brought him back because we said. But there was even, I think it was the LA Times, like they're, they wrote some review when Brian came back, like, well, family guy cave, you know, and brought <laughs> yeah. back Brian. And I was just, it's just, you know, when you, when you, work in animation, you understand that that's, it's impossible. I was actually one of those fans. I was one of the fans. I went onto, uh, what's it called? Like the, the petition site. And I was like, bring Brian back. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he came back, you were like, yeah. I like, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate your passion for it, for that. Yeah. <laughs> Alec, how do you guys keep family guy relevant with the times? You know, you look at, you know, South park as well when they, you know, when the Somali pirate thing was a massive thing, you know, they were focusing on Somali pirates and the Simpsons has been going on since, you know, the, the, the eighties. How do you guys keep family guy relevant with the times? Well, it's tricky. Uh, you know, obviously South park has a great situation where their whole animation process is like under a month. I think it's, you know, they can do an episode from idea to on the air in less than a month. Wow. Um, and we just don't, we can't do that. Um, so, what we do is sometimes if a story is like big enough, we feel that it'll still be relevant in like a year and a half when this thing airs, we'll say, okay, let's go for it. And hopefully the jokes we write are funny enough that people will be like, oh yeah, this story still means something to me. Yeah. But more often than not, we'll write an episode and then a few months later, we'll see what's called an animatic version of that, which is just like a pencil drawing, uh, you know, cartoon, just black and white. Right. And then we will rewrite it after that. So we get to update it a little bit. And then a few months after that, we see it in color for the first time. Wow. And again, we can rewrite it after that. So there are opportunities along the way to uh, add more relevant you know, humor if, if we feel the need. But it is difficult to, like, pin a story, like an entire story on something that is, like... like something a, so relevant right now, you know? Right, right. Now, this might be the toughest question of the day for you, Alec, but in an ideal world, how would you like to see Family Guy come to an end? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think... I think I, I know how it will come to an end. Do you mean, oh. do you mean, do you mean story wise or just yeah. like story oh, story wise? No, I, it's funny. I, I have no thought on what that will be, but I hope it's not with all of them dying. And I hope yeah. uh, it's, you know, <laughs> with some little bit of them, it'll probably end up being some bit of like the family sitting on the couch like they always are at the end of the episode and Peter saying something to camera. Um, and, I, and I'm pitching that now because I think that would be the easiest to write. So. Right. But you have an idea of what the, you guys are thinking about the end of the show right now. No, I don't. Oh, you don't have an idea? Uh, no, I don't. Gotcha. I don't. Gotcha. Uh, until you just asked me. No, I, I, I don't. I, I think it's going to, physically come to an end when Seth want this says, you know, I mean, yeah. when Seth gets tired of doing it, then it will probably end. Right. So to kind of like shift it a little bit, you made the sitcom dads. How come you decided yeah. to actually make that like live action as opposed to animation? Uh, well, I think that Fox was much more interested in having like a live action sort of more old-fashioned style multi-cam sitcom 
you know, multicams are like Cheers and Friends and uh, Seinfeld yeah, yeah, yeah. It has that look. Um, so yeah, that was listen. That that came right. At, there was a little behind uh, behind the scenes on that was, um, you know, Fox the movie side passed on Ted when it was it was offered to them first because I think Seth had to or just did so out of courtesy, and they said no, thank you, and then. Uh, we made Ted with Universal and then Ted became this big hit and Fox was, you know, people at Fox were like, what the fuck? Like, why didn't we, why didn't we get Ted? Who missed this? Yeah, so I had that jump on it. Yeah, so after, after Ted, which is when we went into Pitch Dads, they were like so gung-ho to take anything where Seth's name was on it and we were going to be working on it. Um, so when we pitched them dads, like, I think even before we were done with, like, the first, you know, paragraph, they were like, great, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and I, listen, I, I've always loved live action sitcoms. I think they're some of the best shows on TV, some of the ones I just listed. They're some of the greatest of all time. So the, the chance to do something like that was always appealing to me. And I really liked the process. You know, it was much more like a stage play when you shoot the show and it's exciting with the audience and all that. Now, it just so happened that the show was, like, universally loathed. So that made a different shade to it where it wasn't like this thing where a family guy was so successful. And when you said you worked at Family Guy, people were like, oh, that's so cool. When it, we were on Dads, it was quite the opposite, where it was almost like you had to walk into work like a you know somebody who was walking out of a trial with a trench coat in front of their face. But yeah. it was fun in the doing, and we had a lot of fun uh, in the writer's room on that show. 100%. That's awesome. And then when it comes to um, the whole transition, uh, you know, that you took over essentially from, like, Seth MacFarlane uh, in 2011. Is that correct? I took over at Family Guy? Yeah, do you as being, like, the executive producer. Oh, yeah, I became an executive producer probably around that time, but I didn't become a showrunner, which is what I am now with Rich Appel, until I think it was like 2015 or something like that. Um, maybe even 2016. Uh, so I've been there, there doing that for like four years. Um, I was briefly on another show on uh it was a 20th century fox show but aired on cbs called um wow shit wait what was it called <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is really gonna bother me uh shit <laughs> do you want to give it like a made-up name <laughs> <laughs> just like us yeah. i can't remember it was, it was something like that it was like the, the fabulous hendersons or something yeah yeah no but it aired for like four years so i'm a little annoyed that i can't remember what it's called wow anyway That's well i was only on it one year but it aired, oh life life in pieces <laughs> life in pieces life in pieces that doesn't even remotely sound like very similar <laughs> i know right <laughs> Um, and then can we expect like a Ted 3? I don't think so, but the, we actually just did this thing um, for uh, NBC, I guess, has an, is going to have a new streaming platform called Peacock. Yeah, Peacock. Yeah. I've heard about that. Peacock. So uh, we did this thing, this Ted thing, <clears throat> where basically Ted and Mark Wahlberg are just watching a, a, an old episode of television. It's an old Law and Order, and we just did did like the whole hour of the show with them, like you know, talking along and making fun of the show and each other the whole time. So that's going to be on that Peacock streaming service. Unclear when in the next week or so, but wow. so we'll see. Like if if everybody starts, you know, tipping over tables and demanding a Ted three, you know, I I'm sure Seth would be game. But it just felt like. Ted one was like felt like a home run, and then Ted two felt more like we got hit by a pitch and made it to to first base. Yeah. So it was like, you know, you don't want to ever like continue to descend the, with the quality of something. So if we came up with a story that was like great, and we felt like we could really kind of compete with the first Ted, then maybe we would. Hundred percent. Anyways, Alec, thank you so much for being on our yeah. show. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much.
Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Is and there anything not- that you would like to plug? Uh, just, you know, keep enjoying Family Guy. I hope you do. Thank you. We will. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right, guys. Stay safe, Peace stay healthy. Guys.